So, uh, this particular uh, hour is going to be spent on a type of a revision uh, based on some of the queries uh, that were submitted and then we can see what else can be done. This question we had some time back answered but appears it came again. Can the modified stretch yarn be produced by reducing, uh, no it was twist. twist level. So, that you reduce the stretch by reducing twist level. So, this we said is not a good idea because we have a process of twisting and detwisting. Detwisting takes place after setting. So, obviously, there is some resistance to this as well. And so, what people observed was that if your twist levels are low, there can be less unbending and more reverse twisting. That means, you can actually see that there is a real twist. So, if you have a less twist, then during untwisting, you can have less unbending and more reverse twisting. So, if there is high amount of twist, the helices are more flatter, they are flat and so when you reverse they unbend. When twist is less, the helices are more at inclined at an angle and therefore, because of resistance, it may just get twisted on its own, the whole yarn can get a twist, which means the yarn becomes twist lively. Our aim was filaments are twist lively, but the yarn per se has no twist. And so, that becomes an issue. Therefore, till today, we are going for two heater systems. That means, so it is a costly process, obviously you are spending more energy, everything else. So, the common sense thing does not work. So, you have to go a little extra mile to do this job. So, about the bare, the difference between block and rogue bare. So, block bare is seen, first the barre is a regular irregularity seen after you have dyed the material, right? that is one. So, block barre appears visibly only if yarns with the difference, small difference appear together. If they are together as a bunch or a block, then only you can see the difference, because the difference between one yarn to the other may be just about 2 to 5 percent difference in shade. So, change has taken place morphologically, morphological change has taken place, but after dyeing, actual change may be difference between the two may be only 2 to 5 percent and naked eye definitely has difficulty in identifying 2 to 5 percent shade difference you are not talking about 2 percent shade and 5 percent shade, you are talking about as a 2 percent shade, the next one is 2 percent to 2 percent. So, that much of a change is difficult to identify if they are individually lying somewhere, but if they come in the block, 
then this difference becomes little perceptible. The rogue on the other hand is basically too much different. too much different that means the difference between one non bare and a bare or a faulty yarn is two to five times and so even if it is put individually anywhere after dyeing it will be visible if such type of material is actually available then uh, you will only think of rejects a small percentage of such rogue yarns will be seen anywhere on the fabric. And so how can we correct? A rogue is very difficult to correct, there is no way you can do. You have to segregate them, do whatever you can do because this must be a result of let us say one heater system control, temperature control is finished and so something else is happening and nobody is aware about it. But block can ha occur any time, block bare can occur in time because small variations in time temperature, not time but temperature can always happen and so you can have situations. But what was important is if you can juxtaposition the packages let us say on a knitting machine, uh, you might be able to break the blocks. If the blocks are not there, bare will not be visible. That is how one can probably try to correct this. Best is that you are as accurate as possible, but there is nothing called zero variation system. This one other uh, issue is say how does draw texturing reduce barre related issues. So one other thing which is there is that when you do draw texturing at least the people who are texturizing are aware of the history because every time you make a material then you draw. Drawing if done on a different drawing machine in a different company, everyone says well what you have done I have drawn to, to 3.2 draw ratio, your extension break is this. But that is only one story, the other story is whether the temperature during drawing was controlled or not. So, you may have package to package history variation and so if you have faults which are coming in the material itself, they may get accentuated and then texturing may process may also introduce some variations and you already have more variations to begin with and so it gets issued. Now what happens is if you draw yourself at least you are sure that the large package is being drawn at the same position under the similar conditions and therefore problems which can occur during the drawing or the variation that can occur during the drawing because of thermal or other history, they can be handled. And so you can always say well position number 4 to 20 are exactly same and we can club them together and we can. But otherwise every package which is a drawn package is a different package and the person who is drawing may not appreciate what you are saying that every package has to be identified in different manner and segregated differently and given differently and you also understand well this will only go to position 45, 46 and if you do not do that then the bare issue gets more prominent. So here large amount of package and a bit of a control on the drawing itself would lead to a reduction uh, in the barre. So it is a reduction, right. If you say well I have done everything else and nothing will happen, it is not a question. The question is how much serious the problem is. So as long as this is not serious and public, the, the eye cannot perceive this, then you are all right. So we by draw texturing partly has been handled. This question somehow was related to the migration because it was said that tenacity 
of the simultaneously drawn textured yarn was less. So, one of the reasons was that migration is poor. So, why is the migration poor? This was the kind of question. So, one has to obviously answer the question first why at all the migration takes place? Migration means when you are twisting the yarn, the filaments on the surface have a tendency at a different point in length to go in the core and the ones that are in the core want to come out on the surface. This happens because there is a tension difference between the filaments which are inside and the tension which are difference outside. So, no one would like to remain always under tension and therefore, they keep on replacing each other and so keep migrating from surface to core and core to surface or whatever position that you have. So, it is a tension difference which is more important. In an underon yarn, because the surface filament after twisting hair also will be under more tension, but instead of remaining under tension, they release their tension by extending. A fully drawn yarn does not extend easily and therefore, tension is stored, but an underon yarn just gets extended it has to traverse a larger path on the surface and so there is a tension and the result of the tension is the filament gets extended. And so, tension difference between the filament which are in the inside of the yarn versus on the surface reduces and so migration becomes poor. If someone says that have you solved all the problems with the POY, no, we have reduced the problem. So, it is not as poor, but it is not obviously as good as a fully drawn yarn. But during spinning, which is high speed, the residual draw which could have been 3.6, 3.7 comes down to 1.5 to 1.6. So, large amount of orientation has taken place. And so, if you further want to stretch, obviously the stresses are little more. So, stretching is of an individual filament is relatively you will spend more energy. And that energy if it is more, then tension differences could be there which would allow them to keep shifting their positions. That if you say well we have, will have as good as the fully drawn yarn, that would not be a good thing to say. And therefore, we said that the actual draw ratio, machine draw ratio may be little less than the residual draw ratio which is decided by the material. Idea is that not any filament is overdrawn because if you have a simple story when this is the draw ratio, some of them can be underdrawn, some of them can be overdrawn if this is the center point. So, these will be under always more stress. So, they can have some difficulty. So, you bring the whole thing, shift the baseline a bit in a manner that the no one is overdrawn. So, some of them are obviously underdrawn. So, why is the rate of setting higher for POY compared to that for fully drawn yarn. So, you must have seen some of those curves, you say the crimpidity increase in one case like this, it can go this way or this way. So, you have a rate of setting increases, this is called the crimp rigidity and this is the time. So, it is simply because 
let us say in the case of polyester which is the real classical example where the crystallity of a POY yarn is less around 2 percent, 2 to 3 percent. So, to go to a new state for achieving setting, you can do it faster. So, rate will be high and time will required will be low. So, when you get the maximum possible crimp rigidity, it can be achieved much earlier. So, that is how the rates can be different because the material by itself can be changed at lesser energy or at a smaller time. You can run the machine faster that means the production could be high and that is the advantage also of the POY. In the case of draw texturing also because when you draw and we said the adiabatic changes that take place during drawing process can also locally increase the temperature and where wherever necking is likely to take place that is the time where there is going to be changes as so the uh, stresses are concerned and that is being molecules being pulled to get parallelized in whichever in the direction of the stress of course. And so that advantage also you can have with the POY and extra temperature coming from somewhere else quickly you are reaching the point and so it can help in some way. A fully drawn or normally for example polyester is 27, 28 percent crystalline, nylon is 37 percent crystalline, polypropylene is almost 75 to 80 percent crystalline. So, obviously you spend more time partial melting recrystallization. This was also uh, is the rate of setting for a particular polymer or a fiber a constant like you talk about specific heat of a material or a thermal expansion coefficient of expansion. So, this is not this is not there because this whole process involves heating the yarn first on the surface, then the temperature of the core rising. It is not a question of the temperature of the surface which obviously rises faster, but for changes to take place this temperature of the whole of the yarn should be similar. If it is a heavy denier yarn, so it will take more time other than the specific heat of the material, other than uh, the thermal conductivity, but the dimension itself of the material can change the rate of heating and therefore, not rate of heating in sense the whole mass has to be heated. So, there is a thickness involved and so, if this kind of things change, the draw ratio changes, material become thinner you will probably find a different rate constant. But there is no doubt that same material with a POY versus the same material with a fully drawn yarn, the POY rate will be higher. So, obviously, it is not material dependent, but it could have been fiber dependent, but you can always change the draw ratios, you can change the conditions and so it will not be one value, it will be experiment dependent how you have performed the experiment. So, what these guys must have done is taken the different uh, POYs, texturized them at different times, taken the out, measure the crimp rigidity and then plot the curve. They plot the curve and then find out what is the equation. The equation would be nature would be same, but the constants may not be. So, uh, the other question is what is broken filament problem? So, one thing which has to be remembered it, it is a fun single filament or a one or two of the bunch of the filament that are breaking. 
and why does it occur? Because I also noticed that somebody who had actually written the answer to this question has almost been answering as if this is the problem related to tight spots. But this is not. Slippage, yes. But tight spot is a different problem. So if there was a confusion I thought can be brought out, the broken filaments are not nothing to do with real twist. The broken filament are there because during untwisting, when each filament is an individual entity, after detwisting and if tension levels are high for whatever things and slip also takes place from a solid abrasive surface versus a soft filament yarn under tension, then it can break. So these filament break does not happen in the zone before the twister. They are already twisted and they behave like a single bundle. But when untwisting takes place, whichever the filament happen to be in contact and also in the greater tension and slip also takes place, abrasion will take place and then it may break. So that is one, it is therefore different. Slip is of course responsible, but T2 is also very much responsible. So this is, if T2, wherever T2 is going to be high, this problem will be there. So this is one thing. So tension related issue is this and less of real twist getting inserted. There is no reason, but these things can happen simultaneously. A slip occurred, the broken filament also came and tight spot also. There is no independent processes. They can happen at the same time, both the things can happen, but broken filament is a broken filament and tight spot is a separate thing. Why the broken filaments reduce by increasing the D by Y ratio? So this is the kind of curve that we see and it is also related to T2 because when the D by Y ratio increases, obviously twist level increases, T1 definitely increases, number of helices per unit length also increase, so it would have its own impact on the overall tension of the yarn as well as the crimpidity of the yarn. But at the same time, it also as the moment it gets untwisted, extra length also is available in the detwisting zone and so tension level goes down because of detwisting. More is twisting, more will be detwisting and therefore more reduction in the tension T2. So because T2 gets reduced, therefore the broken filaments keep getting reduced. It also means is that the, you can think of a broken filament more when the D by Y ratio is less because at that time the T2 could be much higher than the T1 because there is a drag. The drag is going to play more role than the untwisting part of it. But after some time, when we approximately believe that when the T2 actually becomes less, then the broken filaments also come to a level which are probably near the acceptable range.
and that is why if suppose somebody has to say that well I am going to do online control of this quality characteristics. So, online control means you should do measure and respond immediately. The only way that you can respond immediately is by measuring tensions. If you actually go check the broken filament and come, of course, you can think of optical sensors which can see the broken filament at what speed running at 1000 meter per minute, what is the time that is available for a sensor to actually measure and say well this is more or this is less, a broken filament just gone. Run a machine at 1000 meters per minute and think of the area at which the sensor works could be 1 millimeter to 4 millimeters that is the kind of sensing that you will do. So, what is the time available for the sensor to check, but on the other hand when you measure tension you are not measuring where it has broken, you are only saying well the quality is likely to go down because the tension differences are being seen. So, accordingly if it is possible you can change, you can change. So, that is advantage also is there if you measure the tension online which is continuously a measuring tension, a good idea. So, this is related to spin finish for friction texturing. So, because it is friction texturing therefore, friction is important. Friction for twisting. We already know that there is going to be problem of slippage and if friction also is less there will be more slippages. The amount of the torque generated also will be less and so the d by y may be very high, but the actual twist level getting inserted will be very low and there will be more slippages. And so, you wanted the friction it is an opposing, requ opposing requirement compared to any other application of the textile filaments, there everywhere you want friction to be less, over guides, winding, unwinding, yarn to yarn friction, weaving, knitting, everywhere you want the tension the friction to be less, but here the opposing requirement and therefore, you have to create a situation where while the yarn is going to be twisted at that time higher frictional torque is a better idea if therefore, friction should be high, but spin finish already has been added which has lubricant because it still has to wind unwind pass through various guides and other devices. So, the only thing that they say is that the recipe now can have a lubricant whose boiling point is less than the temperature of texturing, which in the case of polyester for example, could be 200 plus degrees centigrade and so you got to have material which can evaporate before this. So, of course, you can find material which can evaporate at different temperatures. But it also means that if you do nylon 6, then you do nylon 6, 6 and you do polypropylene texturing. The temperature of all these fibers, optimum temperature are going to be very different. That means, the same finish for different fibers may not function. So, it is only just a concept, but the concept has to be put in practice that you will say well, this is a special finish for unless and until you say well I have added a material which actually can evaporate at 80 degrees centigrade. So, it is good for everyone right. So, you will have to think about it. In the case of POY the tenacity of textured yarn first increases then decreases with an increase in temperature of texturing.
So, if this is the parent yarn P O Y, so textured yarn can have more and then come down, while a fully drawn yarn tenacity may be somewhere else. And so, because it is a material which can be drawn and orientation of the entities whether amorphous region or crystalline region can be increased by drawing, because it is a really, really undrawn material. And therefore, if the overall orientation seem to increase despite whatever we are doing, we are twisting and drawing, it will still be facilitated if the temperature is high, the changes that take place in terms of stretch and then generation, the orientation could be better then. But after some time, of course, it will go down and will always be less than the FDY strength because there is a maximum orientation and texturizing only reduces orientation and so tenacity will go down. So, that is difference between the fully drawn yarn and a POY. Why does surging occur in friction texturing? Surging we said is a periodic variation in tension and twist. in twist and tension. And why does it occur? It is a stick slip phenomena. You start from a zero twist in a yarn and start building the twist as the process goes on. As you keep twisting, whatever you may do, there is an internal resistance also increasing within the yarn. So, there is an external torque which is being generated because of frictions that you have between surface of the disc and that of the yarn and the normal force that you have created by increasing the tension in the yarn as well as by the angle of wrap that will generate the external torque which you are trying to control. But the resistance which also takes place within the material itself which does not want to change its position, that means it is opposing. So, whenever this thing happens that the internal resistance becomes equal to approximately the external torque, it just slips and then within a fraction of a second it will again stick and again go to the same level and again slip. And so, this will occur because of the internal resistance which is obviously opposing any twisting process. This is another interesting thing. What is the difference between the drawing done on a regular drawing machine and that done on a sequential draw texturing machine? So, from the product point of view, if 3.7 draw has been given in the drawing machine and the same draw has been given on a sequential texturing machine, from the product point of view, you may not see much of a change because drawn and you are also maintaining temperature like nylon can, nylons can be drawn at room temperature, but polyesters may have to be drawn at little higher temperature and the same temperature they are also using. So, you do not expect too much of a change as far as the drawn material is concerned its crystallinity will rise, orientation will improve, everything will be there. Only thing which we know is the speed of the drawing machine could be higher. That was the case in the pin texturing. And today, the situation is slightly different that you are actually going for a simultaneous draw texturing using a POI and the speeds have also increased. 
but this material is very different than the material that is drawn on a drawing machine because there is no twist there orientation is very nice so these two are doing. but the question was on sequential draw machine so speed was the only thing at time and now we are not looking at sequential drawing as an alternative this question related to ceramic disc surface in polyurethane discs and something like this is to why should you use this and not use that kind of thing so what we are looking at advantages of let's say ceramic disc advantage is a long life the disc is going to have a longer life is more rigid but then uh, slippages can be more as far as the fiber filament and the surface of the ceramic disc is concerned because mu is going to be less you will try whatever you have tried but we are looking at long term on the other hand the life of polyurethane discs is going to be lower because it's also softer and therefore it can also get abraded in the previous case only the filament would get abraded the ceramic disc would not really get abraded in this case polyurethane discs you may actually see that the disc also may get damaged so its life is less advantage obviously is that coefficient of friction is high less number of discs may be required in a stack and slippages can be low will the finer denier finer yarn with where the denier per filament is less for example a denier filament per filament of 2 to 3 versus a micro denier material where denier is less than 1 0.8 0 0.6 denier per filament so what what kind of a problem so definitely you will see more broken filaments because it is finer despite the fact that you are doing whatever you can do so when it is individual filament which are to withstand all this torture of slip a finer filament is likely to break first and therefore the friction texturing people would not like to easily agree to texturize a micro denier filament yarn because there will be errors but if somebody wants you can do it anyway why is cooling plate used as the machine speed started increasing the time available or the cooling length required for the temperature of the yarn to come down to a level which is below the glass ancient temperature was obviously high like normally why should you require anything because this is a cooler environment heat will automatically flow out you don't want to use anything and good and no abrasion nothing just simply just moving through thing that's the best thing but if you run a machine at a faster speed and also have a free length which is also longer because you have to cool it and it is twisting this is not a yarn just going from where if something is twisting you may see well uncontrolled long lengths can give various kinds of ballooning effects so you have to guide them contact helps that also but before that the transfer of heat by conduction mechanism is faster and so you contact rather than believe in automatic transfer to the environment and because it is contact therefore the shape is convex how does the cooling curve look like well you have a high temperature as it exits the heater 
and will cool if it is cooling naturally. Otherwise, some constants will have to be changed. Then, this type of a curve can be seen that ambient temperature, which is let us say T A and a yarn temperature, let us say T Y, at some stage it will come equal, it will become equal to 2 A and after that temperature will not change. That is why this time is also important at what time this happens. So, this curve may be important. If this happens at a later stage, you will have to do something else and that is why cooling plate came into existence because you do not want. So, you may not be interested in T A, you may be interested in something called a T G where it is still may be somewhere there. But still the rate of cooling will be also important and as such as we know that the rate of cooling the difference between the temperature with time is proportional to negatively proportional, the rate keeps on going down and so uh, equation of this kind may be valid. The temperature at any given point of T minus the ambient then the yarn temperature and the ambient temperature which is constant difference may be following this type of a rule norm. And what it means is the k is a positive value and therefore, the negative sign is there. So, if somebody says my k actually I am putting a negative value then it will be a positive sign. I think that is all uh, were the questions that I could pick up from whatever assignment that you submitted. So, we can stop here.